this video, we're going to have a look at some of the key aspects to be taken into account when you're preparing your topic presentation for ISC3 at C1 level. That's why we're going to have a look at the top tips for a topic presentation. First of all, remember you have to give the examiner a handout or some set of notes so that the examiner can see uh, what your points are going to be and the structure of your presentation. You have to do this as in any other formal presentation because that is what you're doing. So you might talk about, for example, an introduction, uh, then support uh, your point, support your argument. So if you're talking about bilingual education, for example, think of the advantages, then shows the other side of the argument, for example, show that there is there are some other opinions as well. And then, very important, you have to reach a conclusion and ask the examiner to, uh, to ask you questions, invite the examiner for questions. But this structure should be clear from the start on a handout. Remember, your presentation has to be discursive. That means you have to show different sides of the argument and somehow the examiner has to be able to, uh, to take a different stand from yours. It has to be clearly structured, as we said before. So basically what you have to do, you have an argument and you have to develop your argument and you have to show your point of view and support it with clear, relevant information and arguments. Then show the other side of the argument as well. Acknowledge that there are other views, but you have to summarize and conclude. That is essential. You need to reach a conclusion in your four minutes time. Because your presentation has to be structured, very clearly structured, what you have to do is use so-called signpost language. That is expressions and structures that very clearly indicate the structure of your presentation. So you need to introduce a topic, then say the main points and the main structure you're going to follow, then start sections, finish sections, maybe give recommendations, give examples, summarize and conclude. Maybe at some point you need to paraphrase or clarify, say the same thing in a different way. And then finally, remember, you have to invite discussion and invite the examiner to ask you questions. You have all these materials on Google Classroom. But remember, your presentation has to be clearly structured and signposted. Some of our candidates uh, have had problems in the past with time because, you know, you can use up to four minutes, but you can't use any, any more than that. So if you see, you will see the timer probably. So if you see that you're, that you're running out of time, go for your conclusion and invite questions for the examiner. But you really need to do it. In the feedback examiners give us, uh, they have um, described or something negative when people had to, had to stop their presentation rather abruptly without a conclusion or inviting questions for the examiner. So, yeah, practice a lot at home. Um, probably, at home it should last shorter than four minutes. Think of three minutes, 30, because probably exam, uh, the exam situation and nerves are going to make you maybe not be able to do it in your four minutes. But remember, you need to say within the four minutes your conclusion and invite questions. Remember that you have to show that you have a C1 level of English. So you have to show off somehow. And you have to show that you know language at C1 level. So you can use, you know, more complex structures such as third conditionals or mixed conditionals. Uh, you could use inversions. Not only are you, not only do you and definitely you have to use vocabulary which is you know, appropriate and um, relevant to C1 level. 
you can't use very frequent vocabulary or very somehow easy vocabulary. You have you really have to show that you have a C1 level. You somehow need to impress the examiner uh, and show off and as I say, show that you have a C1 level. Because you have decided on the topic you want to discuss, which is perfectly fine, then it is your responsibility to know exactly how to pronounce the keywords. There are going to be some expressions and words that you're going to be repeating over and over again, because they are the, the most important words you're going to use in your presentation. So please look up how you pronounce them, not just pronunciation. Think also of the stress of a word, whether the stress falls on the first syllable, the second syllable, the last syllable, whatever. To check that, you can go to any dictionary, that is my recommendation, uh, the Cambridge Dictionary, you could go to the Oxford Dictionary or whatever. Or, if you want, you can go to this website where native speakers of the language have recorded themselves pronouncing words, place names, people's names. So, do whatever you want, but be sure, make sure that your pronunciation and stress of keywords is the right one. As you know, you have lots of resources um, and more tips for the speaking and listening test, also for the reading and uh, writing test on Google Classroom. So please check all those resources.